Let's just hear for 10 seconds the words of the world's greatest investor Warren Buffett. I was very influenced by Phil Fisher when I first read his two books back around 1960 or thereabouts and I think that they're terrific books. I think Phil is a terrific guy. I think of myself as being a sort of 100% Ben Graham and 100% Phil Fisher. One of the best books on investment was written I think in 1958. I think I read it around 1960. Uh by Phil Fisher called common stocks and uncommon profits in stock market there are two ways to make money one is to time the market that is buying when the markets are low and selling when the markets are expensive which is psychologically very difficult and this involves investing huge sums of money during highest pessimism and uncertainty and then selling at the time of high optimism The other way is to find outstanding companies and hold them forever. Mr. Phil Fisher was known for the latter. He was an advocate of buying businesses which have very long-term prospects and actually never selling them. Mr. Phil Fisher started his investing career in 1928 just before the Great Depression of 1929 when America's market lost more than 90% of its value and over the years developed his style of investing in the great businesses and actually holding them for a very long time as he grew in his investing career and developed confidence on very few businesses he added money to them and sold the businesses which he thought were weak you will be surprised to know that the number of companies in his portfolio as his fund grew reduced to just 6 one of which was motorola which he held on to until his death and it is his this philosophy which made warren buffett say the best time to sell a good business is never if warren buffett as he said makes investing on the principles of phil fisher let's see what they are and how these can help us to make uncommon profits on our investments this is the better investor helping you achieve your financial goals and freedom through organizing your finance stock market investing and learning from billionaires and these are top 5 lessons from the book common stocks and uncommon profits written by phil fisher lesson number 1 what to buy a business has attracted your attention for whatever reason how would you come on to a conclusion that it is worthy of investment of your hard earned money Phil Fisher lays out a 15 point checklist to look for when you are looking for a potential investment. These are 1. How big is the potential? The very first thing you must know is what are the products that the company sells in order to make money. You just cannot invest in a company just because your friend told you about it or just because you looked at the price of it. Once you know what is the product of the business, you must evaluate that how huge is the potential for growth for that product. which can lead to sizable increase in sales for many years to come for example jockey unlike the west where calvin klein is the underwear that every human desires there actually was not a single brand like that in asia not only that the underwears lacked style and quality a company called jockey noticed this and they started branding and gaining customers in asia much like calvin klein in west They have been increasing their sales by almost 20% for last 15 years and even today the growth engine is still running at the same pace. Underwear have a short replacement cycle and one that cannot be disrupted by technology. Irrespective of how the economy is performing or what is happening to inflation, one won't stop buying their underwears. Second, new product development Obviously you would have not known Apple today if they would have slept with their bums facing the fan after their first iPhone won hearts of the people it is one thing to develop a successful product but then all products mature and as that happens the business need a new engine for growth Apple keep coming with new iPhone every couple of years which has features that attract more customers not only that You will know if you look at the history that how the products that Apple offers have evolved over years keeping the growth engines of the company running. Third, efficient research and development. Google started off as a search engine and over years spent huge amount of money on research and development. Their project of Google Maps started from a very small scale and slowly expanded. Today you can literally feel yourself walking on a trek on Google Maps. Google uses its map 
to acquire a lot of data about people which further help them in researching analyzing and growing the main business of advertisement today one cannot imagine traveling or driving without google maps just imagine if they just started charging you $1 per month for using google map their profit would increase in billions but they don't charge you a dime their expense of running google maps is like investing in research and analysis it will give them outsized profit and edge in the future as we know that data is the new oil fourth does a product have above average product quality a company may be selling a product but it has no meaning if the product is of poor quality customers return to buy burgers from mcdonald's because the burgers are of good quality Customers using the product must be satisfied and would want to shed off some money to buy the product again and again. Almost all the great brands pay large emphasis to quality even at the cost of little higher expenditure. This helps them keep their customers loyal and on to themselves. Fifth, does the company have high profit margins? Profit margins means how much profit you earn on the sale of a product worth $100. If you sell a water bottle for $100, however, filling the water and buying the bottle cost you $60, then the difference is the profit margin, which in this case is 40%. High profit margins in comparison with the competitors means company is able to charge premium for the product. This is a good sign. High and growing number of sales are of no use if in long term they do not increase profits. Warren Buffett calls this principle as economies of scale. A good business which has high sales and improving profit margin is the one where by increasing the sale of the product two times the profit increases four times or even more. For example, the sales number of Apple has grown from 13 billion dollars in 2005 to 275 billion dollars in 2021. an increase of 21 times in 16 years can you make a guess how much would the profits have grown the profits after tax have grown from 1 billion dollar in 2005 to 57 billion dollar in 2021 a gigantic gain of 57 times where the sales just grew 21 times sixth what is the company doing to maintain the profit margins this is almost like the second point The present profit margins may be good but you will end up losing money if the business has no plans to maintain the same profit margins. Xerox was a wonderful business its copier had record sales year after year. The owners became lazy and did not do much to maintain the same momentum in future. 7th are the employees in the company happy? Employees are the backbone of the company. If the increase in profit that you are seeing is because of the salary cuts of the employees at lower levels that is not an ideal situation if employees are not happy to work in a particular company that speaks badly of the future prospects of it a company with employees going on strike against management again and again is an example of what you must stay away from 8 are the executives in the company happy and transparent As much as work environment of employees at lower levels is important you must know whether the people at the executive levels are happy working in the company and transparent ninth does the company have depth in its management a company need to be able to survive on its own without relying solely on one brilliant manager elon musk is an example with tesla Once Musk is gone, will Tesla continue to grow and continually come up with mind-blowing and ambitious plans to change the world? Some businesses have such a great management system that the business actually runs on autopilot. It was this principle which led Buffett say, "I like to own businesses which even an idiot can run." 10th, does the company have good accounting? If there is a pizza company and if it does not know that which pizza gives them the highest revenue and which the lowest then like a foolish person company would be investing their money on their worst selling pizza making no good use of the money thus it is prudent for a company to know that what section of the business produce how much income only then can they analyze and improve the business number 11 how are the industry specific numbers every type of business has a peculiarity and a particular financial number that can tell you about strength of the business for example in banking business important metric to see is non performing assets called npa 
which means bad loans which means how much percentage of loans given by the bank have been defaulted and are not being paid the lesser the npa number the better it is for banks if there is an important business related metric you must just look at it number 12 what is the company's outlook on profit some companies will conduct their affairs so as to gain the greatest profit right now others will deliberately curtail maximum immediate profits to build up goodwill and thereby gaining greater overall profits over a period of years amazon is the biggest example of this for years amazon offered products at much deep discount than the market price paying money from their pocket to the vendors to attract customers in the initial years this led amazon take a hit on their profits you will not believe that for the first 17 quarters after the shares of amazon were listed it was running under losses had amazon wanted they could have sold goods at market price or just a little less than the market price but to gain the online customers they played this game of delaying the monetization had amazon ran behind gaining profits in short term it is very evident that they would have not been as successful as they are today you are a long term investor and it is in your best interest if the owner's vision of the company is also long term number 13 financial strength phil is a great advocate of not investing in companies which are overburdened with debt what is better is the company with negligible debt and a business where its profits can take care of its further expansion without raising any money from outside microsoft after initial investment of 1994 has actually never raised a single dollar to grow their own business all these years it has been growing on the past year's profit that must be the company you must desire to invest in number 14 good relationship with investors profit disappointments shifts in demand for one's product field product launches etc are the unavoidable reality for even the most successful companies the key is transparency the management team has to open about such matters companies that clam up are companies to avoid number 15 last but not the least the business owners must have unquestionable integrity the company's management team is closest to the business's assets than the stockholders if you can't trust that the executives manage these assets to the best of their abilities on behalf of the stockholders there can be no discussion the idea must be placed in no thanks pile lesson number 2 when to buy despite the company's growth potential the performance of the business depends on few other factors which are economic cycle that is whether economy is booming or in a recession the attitude of government technological innovation inflation and last but not the least the interest rates at which banks give loans to businesses fisher says that it is humanly impossible to accurately time the market assessing all these factors at a particular time though these factors sound highly economy related but there is also a quote which goes like if economists could predict what stock market is going to do they would have been the richest people which is not the case once you find such a company which satisfies most of the points in 15 point checklist fisher says such a company is a remarkable one once you find a remarkable company there can only be two ways about it first that it can be priced expensively than other of its peers and the reason for it is pretty much because it is a remarkable business and the second that it is priced fairly in your opinion or below its fair value In the latter case Fisher says that you must just buy as much of such type of company as you can at such a price and as the company does well and grows as expected you can add more money to it however if the stock price is quoted expensive then you can still invest a small amount and wait to deploy rest of the money most of the times every business and investors behavior go through cycle What seems expensive today due to exuberance of investors may seem left out 5 year hence. In that case after initial investing a part of your capital you can wait to buy the stock at the price which seems justified to you for its value and growth prospect. But you need to take this with a pinch of salt because you must have that kind of patience to wait to buy the stock at a reasonable price. Potential companies that meet the 15 points of buying 
will always regain their position and rise through downturns and depression it is crucial to have patience as companies will always come with a solution to overcome economic downfalls lesson number 3 when to sell this is the most asked question in an investing community fisher lays out three scenarios where it would be in best interest of an investor to sell a stock first when an investor realizes that he has made a bad decision of buying the stock it requires a great amount of self control and self honesty to admit that we made the wrong judgment it is common to make a bad decision as the entire process of buying a potential stock is very complex handling this situation is often inhibited by individual ego as nobody likes to admit that they were wrong selling bad investments as early as possible minimizes one's loss and opens the opportunity to invest the remaining funds into an alternate outstanding stock the second reason for an investor should sell a stock is when the company degrades over time and fails to meet the 15 reasons for which it was bought a potential company can degrade as management changes over time or the industry as a whole suffers The third reason an investor should sell a stock is when he finds a better investment opportunity. Switching to better stocks is the best decision even with the hassle that comes with it. Before making such investment switches, an investor must extensively analyze the situation and minimize risk related to misjudgment. Lesson number 4. The dividends are overrated. When a company distributes part of the profit to its stockholders it is called dividend a company which is not paying dividends is not necessarily a bad company it might signify that the company wants to set up a new plant invest in a better project this will make a company generate better profits in the long run a person who needs current income should invest in a dividend paying stock however a long term investor shouldn't be bothered about dividends we as investors get carried away by seeing huge dividends a growing company will most likely not pay dividends at all for several years before its price appreciation stops at the end of the day the important factor is where the capital can be employed in order to provide the highest value to the shareholders if suppose my channel is monetized by youtube and i start earning money from it then either i can use that money to pay myself from which i can party with my friends go traveling or what i can do is i can use the money to buy more books on investing which i can use to make more videos or use that money to advertise my youtube channel in geographies where no one knows about me which will help me earn higher revenues and i can keep repeating the process so for this reason paying dividends to the stockholders may not be the best use of money for a company lesson number 5 the don'ts for investors don't buy young companies the young companies have no experience the management is new Though their aspirations are big but anyone who starts a business has big aspirations these young companies may become the next big thing but guessing for such a thing to happen is gambling it is just like predicting whether a newborn baby from womb will win a nationals boxing medal when he is 18 you may get it right but that does not mean that your insight is superior it just means that you were lucky don't quibble of cents and quarters When you find a remarkable stock is available at an attractive price don't wait for it to fall a dollar or 10 dollars more in such a case many a times the stock may never come to the price level that you wanted it to come and just for a couple of dollars you may miss the chance of buying a remarkable business whose stock price may then appreciate for a decade don't be afraid of buying in a pessimistic time Pessimistic times can lead to good buying opportunities. Investors sell off excessively when a situation of worry arrives, which in turn makes a lot of securities undervalued. These situations may be recession, situations of war, terrorist attack, etc. You must not be afraid and buy wholeheartedly. Don't overstress diversification. People in the investing field are paranoid about diversification. The number of stocks in your portfolio is immaterial if you do not know anything about the business. Rather, it is dangerous to invest in business about which you know nothing about. Any remarkable business within themselves are sufficiently diversified. They just don't sell one product but have a diversified portfolio. For example, Amazon. Amazon earns its revenue not just from online shopping 
but also by selling advertisement space by providing transportation services they even make products for sale by the name of brand amazon basics they also have huge revenue from the media platform amazon prime so from far it may look like just one company but if you go closer remarkable businesses already have diversification within their businesses there are actually only a very few business who tick most of the categories of 15 point checklist phil recommends to own not more than 5 stocks with an allocation of not more than 20% each with all 5 stocks belonging to companies in different industries however if one of the stock perform exceptionally and becomes 40% of your portfolio then you must not sell it to make it 20% again rather let it be like that he says never cut your flowers nurture them let's have a quick recap in order for purchase of a company you have to dig deeper like a detective and see if the stock ticks most of the points in fisher's 15 point checklist which in broad manner must have a product with huge growth potential high profit margins have long term outlook on business competitive and honest management once you find a company that satisfies a 15 point checklist and available at a fair or cheap price you must not wait to buy as much as you can If it is available at expensive price you must still buy a small quantity and wait for it to be available at a lesser price in future Fisher says that it is humanly impossible to accurately time the market assessing all the economic factors at a particular time a recession is a best time to buy these businesses because most of the stocks are cheap during this time you must sell a stock if you realize you made a mistake in assessing the stock in the 15 point checklist or made a bad decision in a hurry or over the time the company has degraded and fails to qualify most of the points in your checklist which it once did and last but not the least if you find a better investment opportunity people pay too much attention to the dividend payment of a company a really great management will always find ways to invest in businesses develop a new product which in future increases the profits of the company handing off profits in the hands of stockholders is not the best utilization of money according to fisher as an investor you must avoid young companies don't be paranoid to buy a great businesses at a particular price if you get it in range that you think is cheap buy in loads a 1 dollar here and there will make no difference don't be afraid of buying in a pessimistic times Pessimistic times can lead to a good buying opportunities. Investors sell off excessively when a situation of worry arrives. Don't overstress diversification. The number of stocks in your portfolio is immaterial if you do not know anything about the business. Phil recommends to own not more than 5 stocks with an allocation of not more than 20% each. And if any of it grows more than 20%, then don't reduce the size to make it 20% again. Rather, let it be like that because never cut your flowers, nurture them. That's it guys. If you like the video, please like, share and subscribe. You can also check out my past video in which I have covered the summary from the book How to Avoid Loss and Earn Consistently in Stock Market. I will come again next week with a summary of another book on investing or finance. Until then, cheers guys.